Sanctions are often imposed, but the question is, how effective are they? Well, to help us, Afshin Malavi, a fellow at John, Johns Hopkins Foreign Policy Institute, joins us here in the studio. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, so this is an interesting discussion because we often talk about the ins and outs of uh, these negotiations, but we sometimes forget that these sanctions, they're imposed for specific reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll get to that in a bit, but sure. let me just ask you this. Have the sanctions specifically for Iran worked? Well, you know, it's a good question. It's the ultimate question. The, the question is, what do we mean by worked, right? If we mean by worked, has it inflicted economic pain on the Iranian people? Yes. Has it inflicted pain on the Iranian government, on its oil and gas sector, on all those things you, had, you just, you know, laid out? The answer is yes. But if we mean work, did it limit Iran's uranium enrichment? No, they kept enriching uranium. Uh, and so you had this, this moment where Iran was enriching uranium, sanctions kept going up and up and up, and at some point, uh, what the U.S. administration wanted was an intensification of the conversation among hardliners in Iran to the point where they say, let's negotiate. So in that sense, one might argue that it did work. So you bring up a very, very good point. What is the purpose of sanctions? Right. What, what is a good purpose for sanctions? Yeah, well, in this case, I think, you know, as long as sanctions were targeting a particular goal, which was to get to a negotiating table, I think when sanctions themselves are targeting a change in behavior, that doesn't work. Right. You know, we're seeing sanctions, all sorts of sanctions on Russia. Um, it's not going to change uh, Vladimir Putin's behavior. Um, it, sanctions alone would not change Iran's behavior. But if sanctions are targeted to get to a negotiating table, then maybe one can use the term, quote unquote, worked there. Well, we tried that with Pyongyang. I mean, they're kind of at the negotiating table, right? Yeah, yeah. no, we did. We did. And, and, and you know, in, in the case that when you look at countries, you'd also have to look at countries that have, uh, you know, a much more sort of diverse political class than, say, in North Korea, for example. So Iran has a diverse political class. You've got moderates, you've got reformers, you've got hardliners. And the idea within these sanctions was to get the moderates and the reformers to win the argument against the hardliners. But in a place like North Korea, when you don't have that diverse political class, it's less likely to work. Specifically back to Iran, if, mm -hmm. um, if there are plenty of critics that are, aren't uh, for these sanctions, mm -hmm. But I always wondered, and, and we'll never know the answer to this, but you can help us. If the sanctions had never been in place, what could have happened? It's a, it's, well, it's a good question. I mean, first of all, Iran could have participated in what I consider the most important geoeconomic transformation of the past 10 to 15 years, which is the rise of the emerging markets. When you look around at similar sized economies, you look at Turkey, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, Brazil, some of the big emerging markets, they've all seen dramatic growth. Uh, Iran has not participated in that, particularly in the past five years because of these sanctions. So A, Iran would have been part of the emerging markets conversation. B, would Iran have uh, come to the conclusion that, it, that its nuclear program was not necessary? We'll never know. It, here's, here's another issue I want to ask. Um, country A doesn't like the actions of country B. Right. Therefore, they impose sanctions. Mm -hmm. Those sanctions ultimately don't hurt the government, they, mm -hmm. but they ultimately hurt the people right. of country B. Right. Is there a more effective way to, to, to do this where, because it's, if, if it's governments that disagree with each other, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if punishing the people, which in many cases some would argue that right. this is another example of that, um, it doesn't work. Right, you know, it, you know it's, the, it's the ultimate question about sanctions because, you know, no matter how smart you make them, no matter how targeted you make them, they are a blunt instrument. They're going to hurt middle classes. And it's those same middle classes that Washington wants to reach out to, for example. So, you know, there's, there's always this, this difficult moment where how far do you push those sanctions? Do you want to alienate those same middle classes that are actually very pro-American in the case of Iran? Now, I, I, would, I would say this. Clearly, the sanctions have a huge impact because this is one of the sticking points, right? They yes. want the sanctions to be lifted. If that were to happen in, in, in temporarily or partially, mm -hmm. what would the impact be short run or long run to Iran? It, I think it would be a very significant economic impact for Iran. As I said, Iran has been underperforming its potential dramatically. Uh, Iran could be the next big emerging market. It has very high levels of literacy in its population, young population, an industrial base, strategically located. Iran could play a very significant role in China's one belt, one road policy, and in the maritime Silk Road as well. So China, Iran could really explode as an emerging market absent sanctions.
All right, uh, interesting topic. Uh, Afshin Malavi, thank you very much. Johns Hopkins uh, University, thank you. Thank you. Uh,